When I was about, I think, three years old then, uh, my mother used to be the uh, head of the PE department of the University of San Carlos. That's where my first, uh, what do you call this, encounter with the Santo Niño, since they were having this rehearsal with the Sinulo thing. No? It, it, that happened way back in the 1960s, Wapanang Sinulo Festival. So one of the repertoire of the USC dance troupe, which my mom was the founder, uh, I noticed the Santo Niño, and that's where I really like the image. Mauna na pakita na ko Santo Niño. Then, since then, my ninongs and my ninans during Christmas give me Santo Niño. Okay, mau may lang, mau makung ganahan yun. So during that time till now, uh, I'm already 50 years old. So I've been collecting Santo Niño for the past, I think, 48 years. Since what happened way back 2002, I've had like more than 100. Uh, blessed uh, icons, uh, statues, but uh, after then, uh, what really, it was an eye-opener for me. Uh, it's not just a collection, that's why I have to, to tell them, no, I don't consider them as collectibles. Because if you consider them collectibles, uh, you don't venerate them. But these uh, statues, uh, I usually venerate them during Fiesta Senor, I bring them to the Basilica with them during the first day of Novena, or make altars for them, offer flowers every Friday, all throughout the year. So if you collect them, you just put it aside and you don't put your, what you call this, faith in it and, and your devotion. So, so you have to consider, you have to define collection. It's, uh, it's part, it's trying, you try to collect them as a devotional item. If you collect, there are some levels, no? Cause uh, there are some collectors who collect antique Santo Niños. There are some collectors who collect different images that portray a, a, the Holy Child. Like there's, there's a Santo Niño, police Santo Niño, there's a fisherman, there's Anna It depends on their livelihood. But uh, you have to consider it that, considering that it depends on your, uh, where you're exposed to. Like for me, I'm not much exposed with heritage. so. I'm uh, somebody who really like to preserve heritage and culture, so uh, I, con I consider myself in collecting old Santo Niños that dates back to the 300 years old, 200 years old, because that really gives me the essence of our identity as a Filipino. Because you know that the Santo Niño was originally from uh, Flanders. It's from you know it was brought from Flanders to Spain and Spain to the Philippines. So uh, you might be surprised how come that this image looks so very oriental, with uh, chinky eyes and everything. So there's a different interpretation of our ancestors, because our ancestors, have, they were unskilled carvers, they were unskilled artists, but they were able, there's a meaning on it. Makakita ka, some Santuninos, they're not, uh, what do you call this, not proportion, the body's not proportion, but there's something in it that really has something that you cannot explain because of the physical, considering that for example, now, if you buy Santo Niño, you can easily buy Santo Niño anywhere else because it's it's just, they have just mold to mold it, no? In just racing or just uh, plaster of Paris and everything. It's molded na. But during the olden times, way back 1700, 1800, there's no molding. So they have to carve. And once this carver really carve, it's like they carve with all their heart. Like they carve it the whole day. And you know what, during the time, there's no internet, there's no much vices and everything. So, and they put their heart really into what they're doing. So, makaingon ka nga, this image is really something. Because the one who carved it really took time and really devoted himself for that certain image. Not like karun nga, kita ka, naghanak kayo dito sa mga baligya, it's molded. Right now, uh, this, I have some collections in our ancestral house in Parian at the Yapson Diego Ancestral House. I still have here my few collections of probably like 50. Uh, I don't have favorite. It's the same image. It's the same Santo Nino. But one image that really is close to our heart is uh, the image that my wife brings with her during the Sinulo during the Fluvial and during the Sinulo Grand Parade because for that reason that image we, we bought the image when we were still uh, we were not yet married then and we bought that image then 
uh, we've been trying to dress the image uh, through the years. In fact, we dress uh, the image uh, every fiesta and we adorn the image. People try to question that uh, we're trying to worship idols, but we are not worshiping idols. It's just idols are just uh, just something that we want to s tangible things that you know makita nato just to manifest our faith. It's just a, it's it's more than the object. It's that's why. Uh, I want to make clear, if you're collecting Santo Nino, if you're devotion to Santo Nino, don't just stop to that portion. You have to go beyond like your community. You have to really carry your cross every day. It's the, it, a devotion is, doesn't mean that he always give you a bed of roses. But it's, you know, there's a lot of sacrifice and challenges and he, he tries to give you obstacles, tries to give you uh, difficulties. And he, he tries to show you that it's not all like this. I'm, I'm going to give you some, you know, some uh, ups and downs just to show how strong your faith. Like what happened 2002. Imagine a day before the flu, Bianasunog Ambalay, everything was set, all the costumes were set. Media people from Manila were here, Manila Bulletin, and everything just to get coverage. And all of a sudden, Thursday, Friday, Friday more lunchtime, one o'clock, the sunog. Then Saturday, Fubial, we 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 just wore white T-shirt and maong pants. It's just an eye opener. It's not the nice costumes that we have. It's more than it. It's the heart, the willingness. Even whatever happens to you, it's just, you have to go forward. You have to move on.